Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take a closer look at what we call resonant frequency in our shell circuits. And we're first going to concentrate on how it affects the reactants. Remember that with capacitor reactants, the reactance of the capacitor will decrease as the frequency increases, and the inductor reactance will increase as the frequency increases. And so you can see at some point, the predominant reactance will be from the inductor over here, and then in the lower frequencies, at low frequencies, the predominant will be the uh, capacitor reactants, and at high frequencies will be the inductor reactants, which will be the majority of the reactants of the circuit. Now, it turns out the total reactance of the circuit is actually the difference between the two values. It's not the sum of the two, because they happen, they happen to activate in, uh, at a 180 degree phase difference. For example, the exabel, the uh, inductive reactance, is 90 degrees ahead of the resistor, and the capacitor reactance is 90 degrees behind the resistor, so they're 180 degrees out of phase. Remember when we draw the phase diagram that you can see that the exabel is drawn over here, the resistance is drawn over here, and the capacitor reactance, X sub C, is drawn over here. So they're actually in opposition to one another. So when we add the reactants together, we actually are basically adding the, vector, the vectors together. And since they're in opposite directions, we have to subtract the two values of the vectors, which means that if they're equal in size, then they actually cancel each other out. So the total reactance is the difference between those two values. If we now go ahead and grab the total reactance, and let me use the color blue, you can see that at very low frequencies, it's going to be predominantly the capacitor reactants. But then you can see that when you start subtracting and they become equal in value, the difference will be zero. So that means that this curve will look like this. It'll go to zero when we get to that point, and then it'll start increasing again. And eventually, asymptotically, reach the exabel line right there. So that blue line represents the total reactance x which is equal to the absolute value of exabel minus x sub c. Why do I use the absolute value? Because there's really no such thing as negative reactance or negative resistance. You can't have negative resistance in a circuit. So therefore if x sub c is bigger than exabel, you otherwise would end up with a negative value which is not the case. You always will end up with a positive value which means we have to take the absolute value of the difference. And so the blue line then represents the total reactance in the circuit. Notice that some value right here, which is called the resonance frequency, we'll call that F sub zero, which means the resonance frequency. At that point, at that frequency, the X sub L will equal X sub C. Since we have to subtract them from each other, there's no reactance in the circuit. The only opposition to the current at that point, and of course we have an RCL circuit with a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor, since those two no longer play a role at the resonance frequency, we can see that then the resistance is the only opposition to the current, and the total impedance then only becomes the resistance, there's no longer a reactance as part of the circuit. And that only happens at resonance frequency. Well, how do we find that resonance frequency? Well, we can do that by as follows. We can set X sub C, equal to x sub l, and so we have 1 over 2 pi fc equals 2 pi fl. And so what we're looking, oh, I said l and I wrote c, so I better correct that. Matter of fact, I'm going to reverse the two. I'm going to write it as x sub l equals x sub c. So we end up with 2 pi fl equals 1 over 2 pi fc. So we have to solve that for f. Now notice at the when they're equal to each other, that's when we're at the resonant frequency. So putting all the f's over there, so we have f sub so naught squared is equal to 1 over 4 pi squared times l times c. And then if we take the square root of both sides, we can see that the resonance frequency can be found by taking 1 over 2 pi times the square root of l times c. Now in this particular case, in our example, what would be the resonance frequency? Let's calculate it. So that would be equal to, would be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the square root of L, the inductance, which was 0 0.7958. And we multiply times the capacitance, which is 13.26 times 10 to the minus 6. And let's see what that resonance frequency would be for this particular example. 13.26 e to the 6 minus 
times 0 0.7985 equals, that's better, take the square root of that, times 2 times pi, and then take the inverse of that, and we get 48.9. So that means that in this particular example, F sub naught is equal to 48.9 hertz. All right, and that's how we do that. That's what it means. Resonance frequency means that the X sub L equals X sub C, so they cancel each other out, so there's no reactants in the circuit. To find that value, you set the two equal to each other and solve for the frequency, which is then the resonance frequency. In the next video, we'll see how that then affects the total impedance of the circuit.